Hello, algebra students. This lesson is called graphing from the factored form. The warm up on the screen right here is going to lead us nicely into this lesson. It's going to be what we are building off of in the first part. Go ahead, pause the video now and try this warm up. It's related to the previous lesson we had done where we started talking about graphs of quadratics. And so if you need to look back at those notes, you can. Uh, and after you've got some answers for the warm up, come back and check to see how you did. All right, so this warm up, like I said, came from the previous lesson where we had talked about connections between factored form and standard form and what we can predict those graphs would look like. Notice that both of these equations we are given are in factored form. I know that because they're written as multiplication problems. We've got x times x plus 4 and we've got x times x minus 4. We had learned in the previous lesson that if you have something in factored form, this is a great form to have to identify your x-intercepts. We said to find the x-intercepts, you are setting each part of the factored form equal to zero. So for this first one, I would be setting x equal to zero, and I'd be setting x plus four equal to zero. So that means this first equation here would have x-intercepts at x equals zero, and then x plus four would mean it has an x-intercept at negative four. The second equation will do the same thing. So I'm setting x equal to 0, and I'm setting x minus 4 equal to 0. So that means our two x-intercepts are at 0 and at 4. So how would these graphs be similar? Well, they would both have x-intercepts at 0. And how would they be different? Well, one graph would have an x-intercept at negative 4, and the other graph would have an x intercept at a positive 4. For some similarities, some of the other things I've heard over the years are looking at these, we can identify they're both quadratics. I know that because both equations have an x times x in them. And so if it's quadratic, we know it's going to be a parabola. So I know those graphs are going to look something like this, where we've got that curve, that u-shaped curve in our graph. Um, and just going from there, what you know about quadratics, we know they would be similar that they're both parabolas, but they would be different because those parab parabolas are in different places. We are going to be continuing talking about these graphs of quadratics and how you can predict even more about what that graph looks like looking at factored form. I also have the announcement we are in our final lessons of this class. After this one, there's only three lessons left, so that's exciting. Our objective for this lesson is looking at quadratic functions in factored form and actually graphing them. So breaking down this a little bit, we have learned that something is quadratic if you see an x squared in it or an x times x somewhere in it. We have also learned that factored form is one type of way to, work, to write out a quadratic. It um, usually has parentheses involved, so something like this right here would be factored form or like those ones we had in the warm-up where you just have like an x times something and then finally we have talked about graphs of quadratics what we know so far is that when you graph them they look like parabolas um, and we've said those parabolas can face up like this or face downwards we had started making some connections in that previous lesson between factored form and what the graphs would look like. But in this lesson, notice the objective says we are actually going to be doing the graphing. So I'm going to be giving you an equation in factored form and you are going to create the graph. To get us started, we are going to continue looking at those two functions that we had in the warm up. Using these two functions, we are going to complete this table of values over here for each of the functions. Notice some of them have already been done for us, and I'll use this first one as an example of how you can get f of x. This says for function f, that's that first equation, if x is negative 5, f of x equals 5. Now, how did we get that? Well, if x is negative 5, all we have to do is take our function, so f of x equals x times x plus 4 and we're substituting we're putting a negative 5 here and then a negative 5 anywhere we see an x 
So I get an equation that looks like this. And then when I simplify this, that's negative 5 times negative 1. And negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. And so a few of these have already been done. We're going to go ahead and find the rest of those missing numbers. And then it's going to be similar for the second table for g of x. g of x is a different equation. It's g of x equals x times x minus 4. But for g of x, we're doing the same thing. So for example, for that negative 4, if I want to find that, I'm substituting negative 4 for x and getting this. And then when I substitute, negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 4 is a positive 32. So I can go ahead and put that number here. Go ahead, pause the video, try to fill in the rest of these tables or, you know, as many as you can. Don't spend too, too long doing it. But do try to find a couple to make sure you know that process and then come back and see how you did finishing up that table. All right, I've got that table uh, filled out for us with the remaining missing values. Um, again, I you get this just by doing a lot of substitution. When I do this in person, we kind of divide it up amongst students. But it is important to make sure you know how to do that substitution. Now, coming to our second question, it says, based on these two tables, can you determine the x-intercepts and the vertex of each graph? X-intercepts you already identified in the warm-up. Do you remember what they were? Well, our X-intercepts, if you think about what an X-intercept is, it's those points on your X-axis. And if you were to label those points, it might we might not know what that x coordinate is, but we know the y coordinate is always zero. And so based on that, looking at our table, we can see right here is an x-intercept, and right here is an x-intercept for our first function, and for our second function, here is an x-intercept, and here is an x-intercept. Now you knew that from earlier when we had found them from our factored form. See up here, we've got x-intercepts at zero and negative four, and zero and four. So we're just seeing that again in this table here. But that second question, find the vertex, that is a new thing. Now, we've talked about what a vertex is before. We said when we graph a quadratic equation, you get that parabola, you get that U-shape there. And we said the vertex is that highest or lowest point. Your vertex is where it changes from increasing to decreasing. And so it's those points right there. In our table, do you have a guess for where those vertex, uh, where the vertices are for each? That's the plural of vertex. Well, using that fact that it's the highest or lowest value, here I'm seeing if I were to keep this table going, those numbers would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and similar if I were to go up in the table. Our vertex here is going to be the smallest number or the, the lowest point in our graph, and that is going to be right here at negative 4. And similarly for our second table, again, if I were to continue the table up and down, those numbers would just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That lowest point would be right here at negative 4 again. So thinking about what we're seeing here in our table, um, we are going to go ahead and plot all of these points and see if we can make any observations. Again, to plot all these points, we are just going to be using each of these as a pair of numbers for our coordinate. So for example, negative 5, 5 would be negative 5, and then 5 is going to be halfway between 0 and 10. Negative 4, 0, I'm going over to negative 4 and putting a point there at 0, and so on. And so if you keep doing this and you plot all of those points for that first uh, equation and all of these points for the second equation, you get two graphs that look like this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and label them. We've got this blue one here. That's our first table. That is our f of x equals x times x plus 4. And then our second one, this red one, is our g of x, which is x times x minus 4. I wish I had done these in red and blue instead of uh, pink and orange or green. <laughs> uh, so looking at these graphs, we have the two parabolas. 
I see those U shapes for both of them. I really want to focus in on those three points we've mentioned earlier. So again, we had talked about, we've got these X intercepts and then we had a vertex labeled for each of these. So we've got our X intercepts in yellow and I'm just going to go ahead and circle them. Remember they share that X intercept at zero. And then our first function f of x also has an x-intercept here at negative 4. And then our other graph has an x-intercept here at positive 4. And then we noticed the vertices, those two vertexes, um, are at negative 2, negative 4, and 2, negative 4. And so that's this point here and this point. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can make any observations. I really want you to think about what you notice um, regarding the location of these points and how they compare to each other. Come back to the video when you've got some observations. Some of the observations you could have made connecting our equations with these graphs are that the zeros we had identified in the warm up. So remember for this first one, it was at zero and at negative four. And for our second one, the zeros were at zero and positive four, those match up with the x-intercepts. That we, what was one of the things we had talked about with zeros are they end up being the same as your x-intercepts. So this first one we had zeros at zero and negative four. For the second one we had x-intercepts at zero and positive four. The zeros and the x-intercepts are the same. Um, the other thing though, maybe you noticed, was this new information about our vertex. When you look at where the vertex is, notice the vertex is always in the middle of the two x-intercepts. It is in the middle of the two x-intercepts. And that is always going to be the case. So here, if I have a, my two x-intercepts at 0 and negative 4, my vertex is going to be in the middle of a 0 and a negative 4. In the middle of a 0 and a negative 4 is negative 2. Same thing down here. My vertex is going to be in the middle of 0 and 4, which is a positive 2. And then to find where the y-coordinate is, it's what we had done earlier with that table. It's just substituting. If you substitute a negative 2 into this equation, you get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. And if you substitute a 2 into this equation, you get 2 times negative 2, which is a negative 4. And so that finds those two um, vertices of these two equations. The x-intercept part being the same as the zeros, that we learned in the last lesson, but this new part about the vertex is new for this lesson. And so to summarize, we've got the x values that give zeros for outputs. We had called those the zeros of the function earlier, and that is where the graph intersects with the x-axis. The vertex we had already learned is always the minimum or the maximum. It's the highest or the lowest point. But this part here in bold, this is the new information. Your vertex is always going to be halfway between each of the zeros or those two x-intercepts. Hopefully that makes sense because when we think about a parabola, parabolas are always um, symmetrical. That means that they're even, they're balanced on both sides. We don't have parabolas that look something like this, where it's kind of lopsided or it's leaning one direction. So because they're always symmetrical, it means that your vertex is always in the middle of your two x-intercepts. That will always be true. So the rest of this is practicing using that information to help us actually create these graphs. So to jump down here, notice what is that key information we need to sketch these graphs. We do not, thank goodness, need to make those huge tables that we had seen earlier. Instead, we just need the intercepts and the vertex. And so that's what we're practicing here. There are three different equations on the screen, and your job is going to be to predict where the x-intercepts are and then that x-coordinate of the vertex. Remember, to find the x-intercepts, that's what we had done in the previous lesson and during the warm-up. To find your x-intercepts, you were looking for the zeros. So, for example, for this first one, I need to make x plus 3 equal to 0. 
and x minus 5 equal to 0 to find my x-intercepts. And then the second part, to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, we said the vertex is in the middle of the x-intercepts. So whichever number is in the middle of our x-intercepts, that would be the x-coordinate of the vertex. Go ahead, pause the video, and try finding these right here. This is really important practice to make sure that you're able to create these graphs in the final part of this lesson. All right, I got everything set up here for us to do real quickly. To find the x-intercepts, you are setting each factor equal to 0. And so for our first equation, you would have x-intercepts at negative 3 and at positive 5. So if we write those as points, it would be negative 3, 0, and 5, 0. The x-coordinate we said is going to be in the middle of a negative 3 and 5. Um, some people can look at those two numbers and they can figure out in their head what the middle number is. If you cannot, that's totally okay. The way mathematically you find the middle number, it's the same as taking an average. You add these two numbers, so you add negative 3 and 5, and then you divide by 2. So negative 3 plus 5 divided by 2 would be 2 divided by 2, which gives you 1. So our x-coordinate of our vertex would be 1. We'll do the same thing for these others, and so if you set each factor for the second equation equal to 0, that gives you x-intercepts at 0 and at 3, and so we've got the point 0, 0 and 3, 0. Again, you can look at these two numbers, and maybe you know the middle number would be 1.5, or you can add them together and divide by 2, and that would give you 3 halves or 1.5. And then finally for that last one, the x-intercepts are going to be at negative 4 and positive 4. And so we've got 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. And then the number in the middle of a negative 4 and a positive 4 is 0. If you did it by calculating the average, it gives you 0 as well. Now our final column in our table was just finding the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so that's what I'm doing here. To find the y-coordinate, do you know what we're going to do? It's real similar to what you did at the beginning when you were finding out those missing numbers in those tables. This is the x-coordinate of the vertex, and that's all this table was asking us for. But if we wanted the entire vertex, if I wanted the x and the y-coordinate, to find that y-coordinate, we are just going to take our x-coordinate, the number 1, and substitute it into the equation. So to find the y-coordinate, I would be taking 1 and putting it into this equation. And so it would say 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 5. That would be 4 times negative 4, which is the number negative 16. And so for that added practice, go ahead, pause the video here and see if you can find the y coordinates for those last two vertexes. And so here are the remaining two answers for what the vertex for g of x and h of x would be. I left my work over here if you need to see it. This right here in the table, this is the essential information we need to know if we are going to graph these equations in factored form. So reminding you of what we did above, what we did above was we created these huge tables so that we could plot all of these different points to see where the parabola is. And that just isn't necessary. You don't need a ton of different points. You really just need three, but you need three specific ones. You need to know the two x-intercepts and your vertex. If you have those three points, then you can really clearly see where those parabolas are. And so that is what we were doing in this table here. We were finding the two x-intercepts by calculating those zeros. So by setting each of part of that factored form equal to zero and solving. And then once you have the x-intercepts, finding the vertex. You find the vertex by starting off by finding the middle number of those x-intercepts. That would be the x-coordinate and substituting to find your y-coordinate. 
Once you've got these three points, now you know what the parabola looks like. For example, I've got these three equations graphed below. For f of x, if you know there's an x-intercept at negative 3 and positive 5, so I'll come down here, at negative 3 and positive 5, and then if you know the vertex is at 1, negative 16, so at 1, negative 16, that is enough for you to know where that parabola is. We know that vertex is the lowest point, and so that it would be curving up. We know it has to curve up through those two x-intercepts. And from that, I can see where the parabola is. I don't need any more points. Similarly, for equations g and h, those two functions had these x-intercepts and then that vertex. And once you know these x-intercepts and that vertex, you can see the parabola. Once you know these x-intercepts and that vertex, you can see the parabola. So to summarize, in order to graph from factored form, what have we been doing first? Well, if you are going to create a graph from factored form, the first thing you need to do is you need to find the x-intercepts. And how do we do that? We learned that in the last lesson, and we've been practicing it in this lesson. You set each factor equal to zero. So for example, for this equation here, I would find the x-intercepts by setting x minus 1 equal to 0 and x minus 5 equal to 0. And that gives me x-intercepts at 1 and at 5. So I could go ahead and start by graphing the points 1, 0 and 5, 0. After that, the second part is finding the vertex. Now, how do we find the vertex? Well, we start, the first thing we have to do is find the middle x value. That's what I'm going to call it, where we find the number in the middle of 1 and 5. The number in the middle of 1 and 5 is going to be 3. If you can't look at a 1 and a 5 and know that the middle number is 3, remember you can do that by calculating the average. Just add those two numbers together and divide by 2. And that will show you that that middle number is 3. Once we've got that, though, that's only half of my vertex. And so the way we find that second part is you substitute x to find y. And so if we do that, our equation is y equals x minus 1 times x minus 5. And so if I substitute that, that's 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 5. That is 2 times negative 2, and that is a negative 4. So that gives me the rest of my vertex, and my vertex must be at the point 3, negative 4. In order to graph this, this is all of the information we need. We need these three points here to know where the parabola would be. And so for the final part of this, that's what we are going to be practicing. I have this equation right here for you, y equals x minus 7 times x plus 5. And we are going to graph this without using any technology. In order to graph, remember, you are going to be finding the x-intercepts and the vertex. Go ahead, pause the video here and go through all the same steps we had shown up here to help you decide where that graph would be. Once you have found your x-intercepts and your vertex, come back to this video to check and see how you did. All right, starting with our x-intercepts, we said to find the x-intercepts, you are setting each factor equal to zero. So x minus seven equal to zero and x plus 11 equal to zero. That should give you x-intercepts at seven, and at negative 11. And so our two x-intercepts are at 7, 0, and negative 11, 0. I'm going to go ahead and start putting all of this information over here on the graph. An x-intercept at 7, 0. Let's see, this line right here between 4 and 8 is at 6, so 7 is going to be halfway over. And since it's an x-intercept, uh, I know it's going to be on my x-axis. 
And then for negative 11, this line right here is negative 10, so negative 11 would be right here. Notice just looking at those two points, that's not enough for me to know where the parabola is. It might be going down, it might be going up. I can't tell. I don't know what the highest or the lowest point either is. And so maybe it looks something like this, or maybe it's going down a lot more. That's why just knowing the x-intercepts isn't enough information. That's why we also have to find the vertex. So we said to find the vertex, you start by finding the x-coordinate. That's going to be the number in the middle of 7 and negative 11. Again, if you can't look at those numbers and know the middle, you can just always add them together. So 7 plus negative 11 divided by 2 would be negative 4 divided by 2, and that's at negative 2. If I come over to the graph, notice that negative 2 is right here, and that is in the middle of our x-intercepts, which is exactly what I want. Um, but to, again, to find where the full vertex is, I have to know how high or low it is on the graph, and that's where our y-coordinate comes in. So to find the y-coordinate, we're taking our equation and substituting negative 2. I'm taking my equation, y equals, and instead of writing x, I'm going to be putting a negative 2 there. And so when we do that, doing everything nice and color-coded, it looks like this. And we get y equals negative 9 times 9, and we get y equals negative 81. So our vertex altogether is going to be at the point negative 2, negative 81, which explains why our y-axis, the numbers are so big on it. So negative 2, negative 81, negative 2 is here, negative 80 is right there, so negative 81 would be just a little bit lower. And now that I have those three points, now I can definitely see where my parabola is. When I go to draw my parabola, remember it's a U-shaped curve, so I'm not drawing a straight line here. I want it to kind of curve, and then it's going to look something like that. And then it's symmetrical, so I want to do the exact same thing on this side here. And there we go. I've got a more official-looking graph down here. Mine doesn't look too bad, though. It looks very similar to that. This right here is an example of what the goal of this lesson truly is. The goal of this lesson was if you have an equation in factored form, do you know how to create the graph? And to summarize, it's what we did on the screen. If you have an equation in factored form and you need to graph it, find your x-intercepts by setting each part equal to zero, and then find your vertex by finding that middle x value and substituting it in to find the rest of the point. Once you've got those three points, you've got your graph. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is where we end. Uh, come back for tomorrow's video, which is going to be all about graphing from standard form. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.